Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Thursday, the 30th of November, 2023. Before we get to today's news, uh, I just wanted to clear a few things up. Now, yesterday, in yesterday's video, I made a statement and prediction about the current plight of the team and the manager, or oh, the head coach, uh, Joe Edwards. Um, I would like to inform you all that that was not an emotional reaction to the result at Ipswich Town. Um, I expected us to lose at Ipswich. Um, why Why would we not? Um, we're down the bottom of the table. They're up at the top. They're playing some good football. We are not. Uh, so that was not an emotional reaction to the result or to the performance. Um, it's I'm looking and I'm seeing and I'm reading between the lines of what's being said. And um, this seems like an actual train wreck that we're going through right now. It's the early signs of a train wreck. Um, if we just go back and look at how it all happened, um, the guy's not a manager, he's a head coach. Um, that's a weird thing. Uh, why are we doing that? Um, bizarre thing for us to be doing. Um, he didn't even apply for the job. He didn't apply to be the middle manager. Uh, in the interviews after he was appointed, in the numerous propaganda pieces that were put out to, to push uh, the Joe Edwards project, um, it was stated that he was called up by Alex Aldridge about three weeks into it, or uh, a couple of... Uh, as they were already into the the, the uh, swings and arrows of uh, doing the interview process, so he didn't even want this job in so much as he didn't apply for it. Um, he's never managed an a team that isn't age restricted. He's only been the manager of Chelsea's under eighteens, Chelsea's under twenty threes. And England under twenties. He's never been the manager of a grown man's team. Um, now, first game in, he probably didn't pick the team. Probably Adam Barrett picked the team, huh? and he just went along with it. So he was he was was only there for a few days. So we have that game. We win four 0 at Sheffield Wednesday. We then have the international break. So he's had the whole. He's had like a, a week and a half training with the players, getting to know them, um, and he's got an opportunity now against stronger opposition in Coventry to maybe change a few things up. What does he do? He plays the same team. Um, now, obviously, there's some idiom in, in uh, football that you don't change a winning team, but. You're the new manager, you're coming in, you want to see what the players have got, what they can do. You've probably seen a few things in training. And you pick the exact same team that beat Sheffield Wednesday uh, in an away game for a home game against Coventry. Okay. Um, that's, that's an alarm bell ringing right there. Um... And now we get to the third game in charge. The third game he's had in charge. After the game, he comes out and he publicly slags off the players. Third game in charge, he publicly slags off the players. Hello, that is, that's another alarm bell ring in there. Um, you managers slag off players all the time. They do, generally do it in their dressing room and at the training ground. And... Um, yeah, third game in charge and he's publicly slating the, the players that we've got. Um, that's not a good thing. Uh, after the debacle at Coventry, he then carries on pushing the system on players that can't play the system that he wants to play. Full steam ahead, two feet in, hasn't given it any any reconsideration. 
and we end up getting absolutely smashed against against Ipswich, and they took pee on us. They they brought on two youngsters at half time. We're in the second half, and they eased off. They could have they could have won that game six nil, seven nil. They could have absolutely killed us uh, if they wanted to. Um, if it wasn't, if we won in a week where we're playing a Saturday midweek Saturday, um, they probably would have done. Uh, if that was a weekend game. Going Saturday to Saturday to Saturday, and we played like that. They probably would have absolutely um, piled on the goals. Um, so now we wait and see. We wait and see. Um, what he does in the next game, and I'm pretty certain he's not going to dial it back. He's not going to take account of what's gone on, and he's just going to go out there. With the same system, maybe change some of the players and just tell them again, do this, do this, do this. And it's going to absolutely fail again and we're going to lose 4-0. And I'll tell you now, I'll tell you now, uh, I would 100% take Adam Barrett back as manager in a heartbeat. Full-time manager, not caretaker. Full-time manager, Adam Barrett, even though he didn't win a game. It was, what was it, drawn to, drew two, lost two, or drawn, drew two, lost one? Um, yes, yes, please. Let's have Adam Barrett, because Adam Barrett was more attacking than Gary Rowett, but it wasn't this shit in defence. It wasn't this bad. Uh, it wasn't this bad. Um, it was Gary Rowett with a little bit more. Not this gung-ho, whatever the hell this guy's, this new guy's doing. Um, and not only that, it's, it saddens me to see um, so many Millwall fans turning on the players in concert with Joe Edwards, uh, um, seemingly after his instruction post-match, turning on the players that have been here for years um, that we all know and love uh, and, and understand their ways. Um, for a geezer that they didn't even know existed four weeks ago, they never knew who he was. Who the fuck's Joe Edwards? He doesn't. He, he didn't even have a Wikipedia page. I don't know if he has one now. But so many other fans uh, uh, start slagging off our players, um, and it's just, yeah, it's just. This is a mistake. It's a mistake that Millwall are doing. It's not the first mistake they made. What did they do last season? Elite Sports Group, Euro Ferries, they make mistakes all the time. Um, I just I told you last week about a mistake that they made uh, with the FA Youth Cup. They scheduled the FA Youth Cup without checking beforehand what else was going on. And you you may think, well, that, who cares? Like, no, that's symptomatic of the mistakes that are being made behind the scenes at the club, and that's just the ones that we can see. What are the ones that are going on that we can't see? Um. It's like, in a, like if you're playing chess, you don't just move your pieces without thinking. You think, oh, if I move this piece here, then what about this and this? What about this? Does this, can it affect this? Can they, this happen? And then what happens then? Strategic forward planning. Strategic thinking. And they can't even do that for the basic thing of an under-18s FA Youth Cup match. Nobody thought, oh, let's put it on this date. Oh, but what else is going on at the den on that day? Oh, what, what, oh, there's an under-21 game on the same day. Oh, uh, what do you, a lot of the under-18s are playing for the under-21. Should we, we need to, probably can't put it on the same date as that. We need to find another date or can we get that game moved? Blah, 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 blah you know what I'm saying? And it's symptomatic. Of, I don't know, whose fault is that? Who's, who's for, whose fault is that? Is that Alex Aldridge? Is that Scott Fitzgerald? Who did that? Um, because if it's Alex Aldridge, well, he's the one who recommended Joe Edwards. He's the one who called up Joe Edwards and said, hey, do you want to come and interview for this job? So, what you're seeing now in live time is a massive mistake by the management of Millwall, uh, the upper management, not, not the, the football management, but the upper management, in doing their jobs and uh, doing what's best for the Mill Football Club. And I want nothing personal against Joe Edwards. I don't even know who he is. I, like I said, I didn't know who he was until four weeks ago. 
Um, what I care about is Millwall Football Club and where we're going. And we're not going in the, in, in a good place. We're not going in the right place. Um, this is a, a ma massive mistake that's been made. Um, and once we get to Boxing Day and we lose to QPR at home, I think a lot of you are going to start realising the same thing that I've, I've been realising uh, quite early on. And on that note, let's get into the video. Obviously more post-match comments and some stats. So, uh, everything was a couple of seconds too late. Bullish Mule boss on what needs to change and what the data reveals about the Lions back-to-back -back defeats. Underwhelming defeats to uh, the data. The data. You don't not what you what you can see with your own fucking eyes. Uh, you need to look at the data. Uh, underwhelming defeats to Coventry and Ipswich means it's two losses in three for new boss Joe Edwards, who is keen to respond. <laughs> Joe Edwards insists he won't dwell on Mill's second loss in five days as he analysed where his team fell short against Ipswich Town. The Tractor Boys had it too easy in the first half last night and ran into a 3 0 lead by the 40th minute. Uh, Millwall tightened up in the second half. It switched, took their foot off the gas, and Kevin Nisbet was able to grab a consolation goal in the closing stages to make it 3 1. The Lions boss said elements like basic mistakes and general intensity was what caught his eye more than the tactics. He told Nisbet then. We were in today for recovery. Uh, I made my feelings most clear at half time last night. Uh, there was absolutely an element of response and improvement in the second half, albeit too late as we know. But I think it's important that we don't dwell on it now. Uh, we've got a game so soon after which give, gives us the opportunity to put it right. When we came in today, I did not feel the need to overanalyze too much video footage and stuff like that. Uh, for me, there's time when you can look back at games tactically and the structure of the team and the moments to analyze, to learn from. But last night, so much of it was just about basics and our general intensity and the, our general approach in those early parts of the game. I think we made it clear last night it's time to move forward and what we've got is, yes, a quick turnaround, which is obviously tough for all the teams that are in a position of Wednesday night and then Saturday. A lot of tired bodies today, but tomorrow we go again and we have an opportunity to put it right on Saturday. Uh, Edwards insists the data suggests that it's not general work rate that has caused Mills issues in the defeat subject commentary in Ipswich. He said, the thing is, in terms of work ethic, if you look at the physical data that's coming back after the games, the volume is work is definitely there. In terms of explosive work that the players are outputting, eventually it's there. Uh, they're working very hard. The problem last night was everything was a couple of seconds too late, a couple of yards off. Uh, that probably tells me something about mindset when we're suffering in early parts of games. We knew exactly how Ipswich would start. They're an outstanding form at home and can cause a lot of problems around the goal. And when I say basics, the work ethic was there, but we were just too slow to react. We weren't getting there close enough. And if you look at their goals, I think they went 3-0 up after having four shots. And when you look at all the goals uh, they were scoring, we had enough players in and around the box to be defending. So it wasn't like we weren't getting stretched or we were set up for it. We had the players there to do the basics of defending the box. Uh, the working title was there. It just wasn't quick enough or close enough. It was more of a case of quality as opposed to a lack of effort. Um, Sunderland, the Mills' next opponent, was on Saturday as Edwards has urged his side to show some of the spirit that they did in his first game in charge of a 4-0 win at Sheffield Wednesday. Which was more about Sheffield Wednesday. Have you seen where they are in the table? He said, First things first, we need to get the basics right. There's been a lot of talk since I came in about style of play and the fact that we want to play better football. Used the ball more, and in the first two games, I think there were signs of that. We spoke about the Coventry game that we had a lot of the ball, and our XG in the Coventry game was actually double what our average was for the first 15 games of the season. Uh, there's, there's been some positive signs in terms of our use of the ball in the first two games that we need to get back to and try and keep building upon. And I've still got an absolute belief in the messages that we came in with those first few weeks, but first and foremost, there are basic requirements that you need to earn your way into a football match. Exactly like we did at Hillsborough Hills, where we rode out that t first tough wave. We were competitive, we were blocking balls in our box, uh, we were compact as a team, and that enabled us to stay in the game. And ultimately, uh, when we were the ones that got the first goal, they, they we really built on that. But in the last two games, we've given ourselves too much work to do by being sloppy in key moments in the early parts of the game. Uh, we need to dust ourselves off and be, uh, be big about the fact that we're in a tough moment and face it head on. Just to make sure we get the basics right and build from that. 
So, moving on to this from the South London Press, London News Online. Uh, Mill boss and Jake Cooper dropping out of team as it, at Ipswich and opting for wing backs. Uh, Mill head coach Joe Edwards has explained why Sean Hutchinson start ahead of Jake Cooper in Wednesday night's 3 1 defeat at Ipswich Town. Geordie Hutchinson uh, has been missing with a calf injury since September, an absence of nine championship matches before being an only sub for the most recent three league outings. Cooper had been an ever present for the Lions before dropping out, with Edwards playing uh, Murray Wallace on the left of the back three against the Tractor Boys. Edwards told the South London Press Firstly, I've got full respect for the fact that Archie's club captain and what a great servant he's been for this club, although. He has been out injured for a while. He has been in training since uh, the day that myself and Andy arrived. He came out on the training pitch every day and he's been training really well. Uh, people talk about managers not knowing their best team and I'm more than comfortable at the moment saying that I don't because it's a new journey of a new group. Then why did you play the same team twice in the Sheffield Wednesday commentary? You see what I'm, you see? Do you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? The Gary Rowett bullshit is starting to creep in here. Although I knew the team from watching on the outside, I do want to see the players playing our style with my own eyes. I was keen to get Arch on the pitch so it didn't get longer and longer he'd been out without playing. Uh, it become about rotation. One of the differences since we've been in is probably the fact there are great physical demands from a high speed, explosive point of view, which the stats have been showing. And that includes the guys at the back with a bit of a higher back line at times. Uh, the guys on the defensive side are not as used to that explosive work as the ones at the top end of the pitch. So when you come to these games, in uh, come to these three games in a week, I just took the opportunity to rotate one in the back line, and Coops is the one. Uh, I felt it could maybe do with freshening up. Uh, Edwards opted for wing backs against Ipswich. Uh, it definitely wasn't over fearing what they could do and trying to be too defensive. He said it was definitely uh, acknowledging how many bodies they get in the box. I've seen teams go there in a back form and really get opened up and torn apart. Uh, so it was to try and nullify that box coverage that Ipswich get. I did feel when they press, they're a very narrow team with those inside wingers uh, they use. Uh, I felt by having wing backs, we would be able to hurt them, switch to play more and get more control by using the wing backs and exploit them down the sides um, where they are very narrow. But our basic use of the ball, our speed of it and the quality of it never enabled us to do that. Uh, I've been aware since I've come in that the squad is predominantly in terms of player, probably built for a back five and, and back three. Uh, so to go to it was something I always knew would happen. I even spoke to the players about it before the Sheffield Wednesday game, that during a game we might revert to it if we needed to. Uh, we tried it and we didn't play well, so before we look at anything tactical or system related, we didn't do any of the basics well enough. We were able to properly judge the system. It's there for us to go again in the future, but last night it didn't work for us. Uh, we need to make sure we don't overreact now to every element of the game and overanalyze it because the bottom line is that if the fundamentals are not there, it gets to the point where it doesn't matter what system you play if you're conceding easy goals and turning the ball over easily. Exactly. Exactly. Um, here we go. Um, so again from the London News Online. UK, Mill boss Joe Edwards. We have to move on quickly to the next opponent and prep for Sunderland. Uh, Joe Edwards has explained why he has not done an extensive review of Mill's 3-1 defeat to Ipswich Town with more than one reason for his approach. The Lions only got back from East Angular uh, in the early hours of Thursday morning and next up is Sunderland at the Den on Saturday afternoon. Head coach Edwards was critical of Mill's performance against the high-flying Tractor Boys and apologised to 1,300 travelling fans who made the journey. Asked if he had watched the full match back today, he told the South London Press. I've seen bits and pieces of it. Uh, normally I'd be very keen to watch the whole game back and really study it after game, but there are two factors with this one. Uh, firstly, there's such a quick turnaround to the next one, so you have to move very quickly onto the next opponent. But also the nature of last night's performance means there was definitely bits to learn and take from it tactically. But the biggest issue was just our genuine application intensity and our early setbacks rocked us. It soon became one of those games where at some stage you have to put it to bed pretty quickly and accept it was one of those nights where you played really poorly, not to get overly dragged into the tactical analysis. So that, what that there is, he's 100% putting it on the players, and he's not even looking at how he told the players to set up. You see, what I'm, you see what I'm saying here? You see what I'm saying? Maybe on another day, if we had more time before the next one, then we would. I think I've tried to get that balance of winning through it, seeing what we need to see and taking bits from it, versus moving on and getting ready to Sunderland. 
Uh, it definitely didn't scream out to me as if it was trung wrong tactically or structurally with the team. It was that in the elements of the basics, we were second best to a team that is in real good form in general. Ipswich have won 16 of their last 17 games at Portman Road. Uh, Kieran McKenna's side were runners up in League One last season, amassing 98 points, and they have powered on since the resumption of club football in England's second tier. Uh, there's a lot to be said for momentum, said Edwards. Uh, they came in with that confidence they had from doing so well in League One, and they've ma maintained it. Uh, momentum and confidence can be key, and we're probably slightly towards the other end of that scale at the moment. We were in a position that we really need to get out of. Uh, even when we start okay, which we didn't last night, early setbacks in games, uh, whether that be giving big chances away or conceding goals, are probably affecting us more than they need to. But you come up against a team that's in the exact opposite uh, situation, they're incredibly clinical, and their team has been well put together over a couple of years in terms of recruitment, and obviously well coached, and they're scoring an incredible amount of goals at home. Well, when you watch those goals, not only are they scoring, but the level of the execution is outstanding. Uh, to go 3-0 down was obviously really poor from us, but they aren't used chances, their moments in and around the box where we've got several defenders in there. But they're just so clinical. When you concede so early in the game, it's a mountain to climb, which we couldn't do. Uh, Ipswich's XG uh, at half-time was 0.4, and they scored from three of their four efforts on target in that period. <laughs> it's really hard to believe when you get so well beaten, you don't want to be the person who's always reverting to stats to cover things up, said it was but a lot of us uh, in the game do respect XG as a quite a key stat and a key marker of how the game's going. Uh, that XG tells me it was quite brutal in the way we were punished and then of course the goals have a huge impact on the feeling of the game but also the feeling of the performance. My issue is that when a team scores three goals from four shots, uh, sometimes you can count yourself unlucky but then it becomes a manner of our general performance which is harder to take for us. I would never settle for, for being beaten. Teams going to Portman Road and Leeds in 3-1 can happen. We've seen it quite, uh, fairly regularly at the moment, but it shouldn't happen in the manner in which it did to us. We need to address that and be better than that as quickly as possible. So there you go. Um, seems he's putting it all on the players. He's not even looking at the tactics and, and uh, trying to analyse the video from, from the game. So I fully expect uh, the same again at Sunderland. Uh, probably, what, a 4-0, 5-0 defeat? Uh, we'll see, though. But here we go. This is the stats from whoscored.com. We will analyse the game, uh, which uh, Joe Edwards does not. Uh, you can see there, it's so it seems that they were told to dribble, or maybe if switch don't dribble, they just quickly pass it. Because in all the stats on the right hand side, uh, Ipswich are leading, except for in dribbles, where Millwall are leading. Um, and Ryan Longman had the most tackles for Millwall. Joint most tackles in the whole game. So, and he was high, Millwall's highest rated player. Um, and a lot of fans were slagging him off. Uh, even though, I think that might be because he, he got the assist. Um, so, uh, Millwall stole the ball from, often from the opposition. We're effective creating goal scoring and opportunities from the flanks. We're aggressive and lost possession often. We attacked down the left side and favoured through balls. So here we go, the attempts on goal, 19-5, to 15-4 to 4 open play, 3-1 to 1 set piece, 1-0 uh, to 0 counter attack. Uh, we scored one goal from five, that's a 20% conversion rate, not bad. They scored three from 19, that's a 15% conversion rate. Although it is a tale of two halves, um, of the first half they were absolutely super, they made the changes and then that changed the game. Um, if we go to what we're we going to go to, we is, let's go to this pass types. Uh, total pass is 687 for them, pass streak of 6, 463 for us, pass streak of 4, uh, 13 crosses each, 2 free balls each, 68 long balls each. So it's just the short passing where they, they had 300, what, no, 200 and uh, what, 20 more passes, short passes than us. Uh, so here we go. We were going down both of the wings. They were mostly going down their left hand side. Shot directions. Shot zones. 5% uh, inside the 6 yard box for them, 63% inside the 18 yard box. For us, it was 80. 
20, 80 percent inside the 18 yard box, 20 outside. And now obviously that's a smaller sample size, it's because we only have five shots. Action zones. Middle of the pitch. That's where you need to do most of your defending. In the middle of the pitch. Player positions. What the fuck is going on there? What is going on there? The high line, Mills high line. But then someone's dropping back. Is number four? Is that Hutch? Who's the forty? Whatever that is number there. Is that Harding as well? Harding number like forty or forty one, isn't it? Um, what is that about? That is a very, very, very weird formation for Millwall. Um, very weird. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Bradshaw getting isolated up front on his own, and 23 and 24, is that Sav and Denor? Um, 3 is Murray Wallace, 11 is Longman, uh, 10 is Fleming, 22 is Imaku, 17 is BNC, um, so Harding and Hutch basically playing on each other's toes. Um, maybe that's the confusion there. When you bring Hutch in and tell him to play where Harding was playing, and then Harding's there and he naturally goes over to where he was playing before. Um, I don't know, but Jesus. And then you see Ipswich with a very clear what looks like a 4 2 3 1 on the left wing back pushing further forward, um, which actually eventually makes it a 3 2 4 1. Uh, yes, 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 yes. And look at this. You see, you see, it switches one up front and forwards 27. His average position is just outside our D. Look at Tom Bradshaw. His average position is near the semicircle. Ah, da 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 da. So there you go. Uh, moving on now to more from whoscored.com. Here's a match events. Obviously, they scored in the fifth and the twelfth minutes. They got the first book in, then Fleming got booked. They scored in the 39th minute. Um, Honeyman came on, got booked immediately. Good job there, buddy. Um, then they made their changes on the 60. Oh, the 69th minute they made their changes, bringing on two 20-year-olds, and they basically just eased off the gas, didn't they? Just saw out the game. Um, just didn't tire anyone out. Uh, so let's go down and see what the hell happens. So if you look at the top left and top right, you can see the club badges and the average player rating 7.01 for Ipswich, 6.28 for Mill. That is a massive gap uh, of 0.8 at this level. But as we've already mentioned, it was a tail of two halves. So we can do this and we can do that. So the first half. Look at that, 7.13 to 5.88, absolute fucking dog shit. Uh, Biakaski, 5.3, most of the other players with fives, except for Longman with 6.8, Fleming with 6.0, Norton Cuffey 6.0. Um, so yeah, second half, switch it up. Go back, do that, and it's now gone from 5.88 to 6.4, even though they still had 12 shots in the second half to R2. Um, so there you go, a massive improvement in the second half. Now let's go back and do the whole game again. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look and see what we can see. Uh, so, Chaplin Man of the Match, uh, most of uh, Ipswich players getting sevens or above, except for three of them. Uh, now, Nisbet 7.3 off of the bench, uh, Imaku 5.9, Bradshaw 5.8, Bukowski 5.9, Nor uh, 5.8. 
uh, yeah, not very good, was it? Not very good. Uh, total shots nineteen to five. Um, so there you go. So when you look at it like that, you've got Hurst having four. He didn't score. Chaplin scored one from three. Longo scored one from three. Broadhead scored four one from two. Uh, possession wise, fifty nine to well sixty to forty. And for us, it was Murray Wallace on the ball. Murray Wallace and Harding on the ball most of the time. And Harding is 45. His number is 45. So, yeah, that was him there. So, you, uh, past success percentage, 86 to 76. We've just seen uh, Ipswich having, what is it, 280 more short passes than us. Um, we got Bradshaw of 88, uh, but he was obviously went off early. Uh, Denor of 88, and Harding of 87. Um, so that's interesting. We'll look at that later. Dribbles 5 to 10. Like I said, we were dribbling a lot more. Was that part of the plan? Dribbling. Omaku 2, Norton Cuffey 2, Savile 2, Longman 2. Um, don't know. Aerials won nineteen to fifteen. Just at the back for them. Obviously, uh, we were pumping, I guess, in pumping long balls forward, and they were defending them with their defenders aerially. Uh, Clark and Burgess with seven, whereas with us it was Hutch with three, because obviously there's no Cooper, so we don't have that threat from set pieces. And Fleming with three. Um, so. Ah, it's interesting. None of their forwards, because obviously they were playing it on the floor. Uh, Nineteen to sixteen tackles. You can see their their midfield with most tackles, because if the if fifty percent of the ball is in the middle of third, that's where you need to do your defending in the middle of third. When it gets to your defenders are just the last line of defence, literally. Um, you need to be defending in the middle, and you can see they've got what is it? They've got three central defenders, basically, and another two that can tuck in. Uh, overrunning Denor and Savile. So it's literally, what, four against two. No wonder we lost. Um, corners, four to two. These are the players who won the corners. Dispossessed, four to ten. Having the ball taken off of you again. Bradshaw, three. Isolated up front. Or well, not up front, just near the semicircle. Uh, so moving on to this, it's basically who scored dot com pay up part three, more of the same. Uh, we can see so Ipswich had what is it nineteen shots? How many were on target? Uh, so they had nineteen shots. They had two, three, four, three, four, eight on target. So literally, the system that I've said half, half, half. So had nineteen shots. Half of that is eight, eight. Eight is uh, on target. Of that, they should have got four goals. They only got three. But that's it. That's that is the perfection. That's that's uh, the stat of perfection. Half, half, half. That's the golden ratio in terms of goals. However many shots you have, half of them should be on target, and half of those shots on target should be goals. And this is a perfect example of what it should did here. Uh, if we get to Mill and see what Mill did. If we go to the ratings first. We got two players uh, above seven. This is so interesting. Obviously, you you got Ryan Longman there, seven point six one. We got the assist. Um, you've got Kevin and Kevin Nisbet on the pitch for what, thirty minutes, seven point two six. Number two, who's third? Ryan Leonard. He's had twenty minutes on the pitch. First, he's the third highest score, six point three two, and Hutch six point three one. Uh, coming in at fourth, thirty three year old Sean Hudson. And George Savile, 6.27. Uh, an equal score with Billy Mitchell came on, 6.27. So again, this is a, another point. When your subs are outscoring the players that they've, they've come on for, that's not good. Uh, because they've had less time on the pitch. So how are they getting a higher score than the players who started on the pitch? Um... So, touches of the ball. Mario Wallace, 76. Book Norton Cuffey, 68. Wes Hartley, 68. Hutch, 58. Ryan Longman, 50. Um, shots and shots on target. Let's go to that. So, five shots. 
three on target. That's not bad. And then one goal. So if we could have created more, um, we might have done done better because that's a good ratio. It's not as gold golden as the Ipswich one, but that's five three one. Five three one. If it would have been six, if it would have been eight four two, it might it might have been a bit better, but five three one. That's a good ratio. That is a good ratio. Um, so yeah. Uh, what are we doing? We are going to go to offensive. If it loads. Uh, unscheduled touches. Basically poor ball control. Norton Cuffy. Bradshaw with three. Um, defensive wise. So who did what? So we already know that Ryan Longman had the most tackles at four. And then it's the other guy with three. Uh, the other guy on the other wing, Brooke Norton Cuffey. And then you've got Wes Harding, Murray Wallace and Casper Knorr with two each. Uh, uh, interceptions. Murray Wallace with three, Hutch with two. Clearances. Wes Harding with three, Sean Hutchinson with two. Blocked shot. Swiss Harding with two, Sean Hutchinson with two. So there you go. Uh, now, let's have a look at the passing. Um, so, passing accuracy. Billy Mitchell, but off of 19 passes. Um, probably got a Wes Harding, but that's probably got short balls, isn't it? Um, 86 off of 53, that's not bad. Um, okay. Um, okay, let's move on. Let's move on to fbref.com and have a look at what we're going to see here. So, obviously, let's have a look at their goalkeeper first, Lad Key. Uh, shots on target against three, goals against one, saves two, so 66.7. That's the post shot XG of 0.5. Um, so, pretty decent goalkeeper that we're up against. Um, now, here we go. Uh, let's look at the middle team. What are we looking at first? I don't know. Uh, let's look at shot creating actions. See, we only have five shots, but for every shot creating, there's two shot creating actions uh, recorded uh, on this uh, website for each shot. And we'll we'll get onto that in a minute when we scroll down. Um, so the most attacking players basically who create things. Ryan Longman with three, um, and he create he had a goal creating action. So if he got the last touch on the assist, and you got George Honeyman with, with one as well. I don't know why did they give it to George Honeyman. I thought it was Kevin Nisbet. I thought Kevin Nisbet played it out to, to Ryan Longman, or did Kevin Nisbet play out to George Honeyman who played it to Ryan Longman? Because they've given it to George Honeyman here. But yeah, so George Honeyman, two and one. So that's what he did when he came on. Um, Zion Fleming, two. So yeah, those were the uh, creative players. Um, passes, uh, attempted and completed. Although, look, George Honeyman passing. Bismol, 55%. 20 attempted, 11 completed. Um... Yes, not very good at all, is it? But right, here's the thing. Progressive passes, what does that mean? It means going towards the opponent's... Uh, 10 yards towards the opponent's goal. Like we were saying with Billy Mitchell, sideways Billy. Uh, 20 passes, 18 completed, that's 90%. But not one of them was forwards by 10 yards. Hey, um... Players who were passing it forward were Barry Wallace, Casper Denor, and Zion Fleming. Uh, in terms of carries, picking up the ball and then going towards your opponent's goal, uh, Brook Norton Cuffey, 35 carries, only 5 were forwards. Well, by 10 yards. Um, that was it. Everyone was like, that's it. No one else did fuck all. You got Campbell with one, Longman with one. That was probably for the goal. Lot Leonard with one. 
in in nine in ninety minute match, eight eight times our players took it towards the opponent's goal. Like fucking hell. And here we go with the dribbling, the take ons, that's dribbling. Uh, this one here. You can see Maku two and two, Longman four and two, Jules Savile two and two. But Brook Norton Cuffey, he tried it nine times, only succeeded two times. Um so there you go, um passing. So here's the thing as well that you get from this, like we progressive um progressive passing. How many yards they passed it for and how many of those were towards the opponent's goal? Brook Norton Cuffey, three hundred and sixty three yards of passing, only ninety five of that was towards the opponent's goal. Um Ooh, and Billy Mitchell at sideways Billy, 332, 54 was forwards. But you got Campbell there with only 36 forward, but that's off 186. But the work well, this is gonna be the worst one here, was it? 74 forward yards from uh Jules Savile from 504 yards of passing. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um Passes into the final third. Passes in passes into the penalty area. Zion Fleming with one. Longman with one. That was it. Two two in the old game. We go up to the other mob and see what they did. So passes. Passes into the penalty area for the opposition. Twelve. Twelve. And what happened? How did we score again? Oh it was a cross into the penalty area. From the left hand side, which uh, Kevin Nisbet guided into the corner. Was it not? Um, crosses into the penalty area. Long one, just the one. Pass types. Uh, defensive actions, tackles and where they were, tackles in defence, six, Taxes, tackles in the middle of the pitch, nine, tackles in the attacking third, one. And that was Ryan Longman, again with the tackling, he's tackling all over the pitch. Uh, challenges, three of three, 100%. Um, tackles and interceptions, five. So there you go. Possession. So you go, Norm Cuffey. Like I said, nine attempts at taking on someone, only succeeded two times. 22.2% success rate. He was tackled seven other t oh, second other times. So it's not that he lost the ball or he went out for a throw in. He got tackled. They took the ball off him. That's not good for, for getting counter attacked on, is it? Ay, ay, ay. Uh, miscellaneous stats. Um, the aerial duels. Tom Bradshaw, the uh, basically titular target man. One. 1-1, one, one, lost 3. Uh, Kevin Nisbet, 1-1. One and one. Fleming, 100%. 3. Maku, lost all 4 of his aerial jewels. As did Brook Norton Cuffey. And Hutch won all 3 of these. So, yeah, there you can go. There you go. So, number of loose balls recovered. Fleming, 6. Savile, 8. Uh, Hutch, 6. Um, let's go down to the goalkeeper. So here we go. Bar seven shots on target against goals against three saves four. So that's a save percentage of fifty seven point one, which is lower than the other guy who got sixty sixty six point six. Um, post shot xg was one point two. Um, 
XG's average length, length of passes of 36.4. His average length from his goal kicks was 48.9. So I think he's pulling his kicks there. Um, not really trying to get as long as he can. Um, probably trying because, like I said, uh, the team was kind of bunched up. Uh, here we go. Look at this. Look at, at this. These are a list of all the shots in that game. Uh, you can see it's mostly Ipswich Town. Even in that second half where they took the foot off the gas. They still had all of those shots and we only had two. Um, they scored with their first two shots on goal. The first two shots that they had, they scored. Um, yeah. One from 16 yards, one from 22 yards. Uh, then the third goal was from 11 yards out. And our goal was from 8 yards out. Left foot volley. Not bad. And you can see here shot creating action. Uh, George Honeyman apparently passed it to Ron Longman who passed it to Kevin Nisbet. Um, so there you go. Um, yeah, what can, what, what can you say? Like I said, we wait and see what he does against Sunderland. Does he dial it back or does he keep going on the same old, same old? Uh, I didn't bring you these. The touches of the ball, 819 to 599. Uh, tackles, 19 to 16. Interceptions, 10 to 10. Aerials, 119 to 15. Clearances, 14 to 9. Offsides, four off. So we were playing the high line, got them offside four times. We were obviously never offside because we weren't that far up the pitch. Uh, goal kicks only one to seven, so they only had one goal kick, so we didn't even kick it out for a, for a, have any crazy wild shots from far away. They went out for a goal kick. In a ninety-minute match, they only had one goal kick. Ay, 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 ay. Throw-ins twenty to twenty-four, long balls eighty-six to seventy-nine. Um, yeah, like I said, um, if he doesn't dial it back against Sunderland, then we get absolutely smashed again. It's it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Um, we then got to, we've got to play Cardiff. We've got to play Leicester, and then we've got games that we need to be winning against Huddersfield and QPR. And if we don't win those, um, it's it's gonna be really bad. It's gonna be really bad. And on that note, that sad sad note. Thank you for watching and goodbye.